<coughs> okay, no now that we're all here, call the meeting order. It's May 17th and it's seven o'clock. Um, can I have uh, acceptance of the agenda? This is a uh, amended agenda. Everyone should have the, uh, the one with 7A on it. Move to accept the amended agenda. Second. Moved by Mr. Danny, second by Mr. Norton. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous. Okay, we'll move on to number two. Excuse me, number three. Wait a minute. Two. Number two, right, well. except for the and a walk-in period. Are there any walk-ins here? Okay, I don't see any. So we'll skip right on to number three. Discussion vote of the new manager at Situate Harbor Yacht Club. Mr. Colfoyce. This is a, just a brief procedural matter. Uh, we have a new manager at the Situate Harbor Yacht Club. Tim Key, who's here today, he has great management experience. We're excited about him being our manager down there. And I believe as part of our liquor license responsibility, we have to advise you of that and just have the procedural change with respect to it. And that's why we're here tonight. Great. Motion? Any, any questions? Motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion. Uh, move to the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the request for a change in manager for the Situate Harbor Yard Club to Timothy Feeney. Second. Se Moved by Mr. Norton. Second by Mr. Danny. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous. Good luck, Mr. Feeney. We'll see you down there. All right. Cruising right along. We'll go on to uh, number four, which is the uh, discussion vote for reconsideration of uh, sewer betterment deferral 11-1, which we discussed at the previous meeting. Um, a quick overview. It became apparent, and Trish, correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, we gave the um, deferral on um, the sewer betterment, which really was not legal for us to do because of the state mandate that says that they have to be um, accepted under Chapter 13B, no, uh, 41A of uh, Chapter 59. So. Um, and that was not the case. So before you can get a, a um, deferral for a betterment, you first have to uh, pass an income um, level, which they, which this applicant did not pass. Uh, move, move to reconsider. I'll second that. So moved by Mr. Norton, second by Mr. Danahy. Any further discussion on it? Tricia, anything we left out? No, so you're going to reconsider and yeah. then vote. Yeah. So this is to reconsider mm -hmm. the um, last meeting's, I don't remember the number, deferral. but yeah. deferral that we passed. So all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? I abstain, Mr. Chair, because I was not at that meeting, so I should not participate in this vote. I can participate in the next vote. So that's a 4 nothing um, passing of the reconsideration. So now we'll go on to discuss it, um, the deferral of the, uh, the applicant that is before us. Mr. Norton. I'll make a motion for the discussion. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen vote to deny sewer betterment deferral 11-1 per Massachusetts General Law Chapter 83, which was accepted at the town meeting. I'll second it. I, I, and I do that because for, for the reasons that you uh, mentioned, Mr. Chairman, we, we, uh, we try to do the right thing, but Legally, obviously, we can't, so. Right. So that's moved by Mr. Norton, second by Mr. Harris. Any other discussion? Yeah, I have a question. I, maybe this is to Steve. Um, and I didn't have a chance to look this up. Under Chapter 59, 41A, there is a list of exemptions. That wasn't provided to us in our packet. So I was trying to figure out, are there any other exemptions? I know that it was. it seems to me like the policy <coughs> for the basis is due to what we've uh, promulgated as uh, at the assessor's level is that the uh, in order to qualify there's a there's a <coughs> okay those income guidelines where do they originate from from the state or from the town okay so in other words because they didn't <coughs> hit the income ma maximum or minimum I guess you requirement they exceeded it legally they're not entitled to it, which is the reason why this board needs to go back and say, okay, we since you're over the limit, 
you don't qualify. Therefore, um, we as a board were in error by granting that deferral. All right. I just wanted to make sure because I didn't have that chapter and I didn't have a chance to look it up. And um, providing there's no other remedy, um, I do have one other question. Let's see. Would they be able then to, or could they have gone under a, a financial hardship requirement under, I say, Clause 18, 18A? I saw that there, but that's the discretion of the Board of Assessors. So would they then have to reapply, or can they amend there for the assessors to review it in that category? Okay. So in order for them to have done that, they would have had to have filed both for that section as well as this section. Okay. okay. Thank and you. They, they could reapply next year if their situation right. so it changes. Because I'm, ass I'm assuming the only reason why they're over by like a few thousand dollars based on the, the category they selected. No, I'm not going to get into specifics. I'm just only saying because of they had been granted it, they attempted to. The reason why I looked at it was this. They attempted to try to better themselves, but in the process, by doing that, because they were over by a few thousand dollars, it actually cut against them, whereas the, incur the incentive to try to better themselves is going to be less because they could go and say, guess what, we're not going to rent out this section, puts them in that category. Yeah. <coughs> That's all. I just wanted to kind of get some clarification. I appreciate that. Thank you. No further questions, Mr. Chair. Mr. Murray, did you have a question? I'm all set. Anyone else? All set. Okay, so we have a motion and we have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? So it's unanimous, five to nothing. So we'll move on to item number five, which is the acceptance of a gift. Motion. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have a letter here, which I'd just like to read as the clerk. Uh, associated with this motion. It's um, from Jennifer Vitelli, who's the Director of Recreation, it says, Dear Mr. Danahy, as Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, I respectfully request the Board of Selectmen accept the generous donation of a 13-foot powerboat from the Friends of Situate Recreation. This boat will serve as one of our chase boats for the mm -hmm. summer sailing program. The Friends of Situate Recreation via the P.J. Steverman Golf Classic have been a tremendous friend to our town, donating nearly $300,000 back to our community. Sincerely, Jennifer Vitelli. And uh, if I may continue with a, with a motion. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the gift of a 13-foot powerboat from the Friends of Situate Recreation on behalf of the Town of Situate and the Recreation Department. Second a motion. Second. Mr. Murray, second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. It's very generous of the, the Superman family uh, once again. Say the board's going to be seeing more of these. We just had a discussion of this in the staff meeting where there are donations or gifts or, or equipment or things regularly made to departments. The board actually is the one that approves those before they're accepted. They don't come as a thank you after the fact. I mean, we need to ensure this vote. We need to make a determination if it's a gift we want. Sometimes the planning board negotiates land as part of approvals. Those all need to come to the board as the chief executive officers to approve before they can individually be accepted by any board or committee. So you'll tend to be seeing more of these lately, and I spoke with it about it at length at the last staff meeting. So Good. May I, and good I have a quick recognition? Mr. Chairman, I have a quick follow-up on that. Yes, Mr. Mark. You refer to, to land to the planning board as part of discussions of projects? Under the subdivision review Understood. Of donation of land. Yeah. That's something that this board needs to before the planning board yeah, issues that with law. Correct. and Thank can you. we like just like ppc understood I mean, the yep. board overall should have a sense of what the town is acquiring and should have your blessing yeah. in those situations is the board constrained to only approve that which was offered or can the board counter and say okay this is what we'd like to see in this particular case you would go back to the planning board and have that conversation okay. but what's happening now is you're finding out after the fact and i'm just trying to flip that and have the conversation beforehand because at the end of the day only this board can accept gifts only this board can accept land um, and again if someone wants to donate something that's wonderful but again it might not be something 
Right. Yeah, we want, right. Good point. Great. So let's move on to item number six, which is a vote on Hawker Peddler's license renewal for Zach's ice cream. Is anyone here from Zach's ice cream? No. So we have to decide whether we want to go ahead and move it or if we want to ask him to come up and uh, attend the meeting. Yes, Mr. Mr. Harris. Yeah. Normally I would say, you know, I think it's important enough that they come in, but reading the back up here, he's been in business for six years in this town. It's a renewal. It's a renewal. And haven't really, haven't had any complaints about him. Obviously followed the guidelines. Well, I would. holding on to this one for a little bit, which is why I had to I, I don't have a problem voting it. That's just my opinion. Mr. North? I would, I'd agree. We're, we're, we're at a renewal. I mean, he's been here five years in a row. That's why. Mr. Daly? Just the only thing I'd suggest is I think we did it with him, and I think we do it with certainly the ice cream uh, vendors, is to give him the policy. I forgot which one it is, 94 dash, 96 dash, whatever, about the um, policy that they can't sell within the, so many feet of a store so that he's aware of it, or at least he's been put on notice again. That's all. Okay. Whenever we send it to him, just so he has that notice. I think it's important if they, for once a year for them to show up. I mean, not on this case, but yeah. I think in the future, it's even it's good to see the person that's even a renewal. Yeah, I mean, it's one time to get, you want to get a license to do business in our town? Come and. Yeah, it's too much to ask. I don't. I mean, I don't think we're going to set that precedent now. But, um, but like John said, when something comes up and there's been a, an enforcement of something or a change in something, we want to make sure that we don't have someone coming back later saying, "Oh, I didn't know that." Or you could suggest every other year, you know, and then say, "Okay, this year it's routine. Next year, you know what? I'd like to see your face and kind of come in and talk to the board, even if it's for five minutes or something." Yeah. I like that idea. <coughs> okay, so. Um, so on this item, motion. One motion. Thank you. Move that the board of selectmen vote to renew the Hawker Peddler's license for the ice cream vendor's license for Ahmad Alakataba doing business at Zach's Ice Cream for 2011. This license is subject to positive inspection by the Board of Health. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Danny. Second by Mr. Murray. Further discussion. Seeing none. Just one quick note. Um, Kim was nice enough to put in here that says that we currently only have one ice cream vendor licensed, so this would be two. So the town is not inundated with, with ice cream trucks um, driving around to all our beaches and baseball fields and stuff. Um, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It is unanimously 5-0. Moving on to number seven. Um, this is a a public hearing that was scheduled for 7.30 for the um, Hummer Rock Tavern LLC. And I have received a fax um, asking that they withdraw this application at this time. And um, they would like uh, to request that we withdraw with it and accept the weather without prejudice. So do we have to actually make a motion for the withdrawal or do we just take it off? So why don't we... Uh, do I have a motion to accept the withdrawal? Move to accept, um, <coughs> um, or motion to accept uh, withdrawal of the applicant for their um, liquor license for uh, Hummer Rock Tavern LLC. Second by Mr. Danny, Mr. Danny, second by Mr. Um, Murray. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It is unanimous at 5-0. Now we'll move on to the amended item, which is item 7A, a discussion vote for a one-day liquor license at the Situate Marine Center. This is for an event for the 375th anniversary. Yes, Mr. Norton? I would you like a motion, Mr. Chairman? Yes. If I can find the... Uh, move to allow a one-day liquor license uh, for the uh, Situate 375th Committee at the uh, um, Maritime Center on June 1st. June 1st. 1st. Second. From? 5 to 7. Uh, 5.30 to 7.30. 5.30 to 7.30. 
and to waive uh, the fee. If I could be so bold to suggest to waive the fee in that motion. Second. Second by me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Just can't give it up. So we've got a motion. <laughs> uh, did you get the motion, the combined motion by Mr. Um, Norton, Mr. Danny, <laughs> and then seconded by Mr. Harris. Mr. Chairman, before we vote on that, can I just, what, what I thought of that this, this, this afternoon, uh, and I may not think of it again, uh, the next celebration will be the 400th, uh, Tricia, and I wonder if you could just make a note to put at the next annual town meeting, I guess, an article to, to put aside 5000 or $10,000, um, whatever, uh, for that 400th celebration so that the people who are sitting here at that time. You'll be here. No, I won't. <laughs> if I am, it'll be a celebration, I mean. <laughs> uh, you know, I won't have to look for $25,000. There is some money put aside for the 400. I have no idea how much. I happen to be in the treasurer's office today, and she mentioned there was a, an account for the 400. If, if you can just state your name. Matthew Brown. Matthew Brown. And Mr. Brown, if maybe you just like to say a little bit about this event on the first so people watching can hear. <laughs> yeah, if you, no, no, just the Cliff Nose version, and maybe you can sit up here. Okay, well, I've <coughs> told the story to most everybody in town, but I'll tell it quickly again. On June 1st, 1813, the... Excuse me, you're not going to go from there to here. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> just, uh, on October 2nd, 1814. <laughs> on June 1st, 1813, the, the USS... Uh, <coughs> blockaded in Boston Harbor by the HMS Shannon. And people around the Commonwealth were getting upset that the Chesapeake wouldn't go out. They'd pay good taxpayers money for it. They'd just appointed a brand new 28-year-old captain and they recruited a brand new crew. Well, the captain was smart because the Shannon was an experienced brittle British frigate and was dangerous. But the criticism got to him, and on June 1st, he left Boston Harbor, and as he passed Boston Light, people all over the co coastline recognized that the Chesapeake was out, and people gathered by the seashore. He sailed 18 miles due east, and there he met the Shannon, and with 15 minutes, in 15 minutes, the battle was over. Um, 61 Americans lie dead, and the brand new captain was carried below with mortal wounds, and the last words he said was, tell the men to fire faster and don't give up the ship. Fight her till she sinks. Well, the British took over the ship, sailed it to Halifax, and it was a dark day for the United States Navy. But three months later, on Lake Erie, a good friend of Commander Lawrence, uh, Co uh, Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry, changed the name of his flagship to the USS Lawrence, he had a flag made that said, don't give up the ship, and flew it from the taprail of his ship and attacked the British. And this time, the results were different. He reported to his commander, we have met the enemy and they are ours. And they drove the British from the United States and set up a favorable decision on the War of 1812, and never again has the American Navy been threatened by any Navy. And that those words, don't give up the ship, were adopted by the motto, as the motto of the United States Navy. And that battle in which those words were said happened 11 miles from Situ. And it could have been seen from Second Cliff. It could have been seen from where the lighthouse is today. And not too many people know about that. So I want to celebrate that. A lot of us want to celebrate that in, in conjunction with the 375th. So on the, 199th year of that battle. We're going to have a reception over the Maritime Park, and we're going to award 15 flags, uh, replicas of the Perry flag, uh, to people who have public uh, flagpoles. And we're going to ask them to fly that flag, and we're going to ask people to remember that Situate was the birthplace of the motto of the United States Navy. And I would like that to continue throughout the years. So we have another story about the War of 1812 other than the story of, of Rebecca and Abigail. Now we have a story of brave men dying off the shores of Situate. So that's what that is all about. And it would be nice to have some finger food and something to drink at, at this reception. 
we plan to have the captain of the Constitution come down with a color guard and award these um, flags. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to tell this story again. <laughs> but you will have all heard it. And uh, so I want everybody in town to know that story so they would be able to repeat it. Thank you, Mr. Brown. So it's open to the public? No. It's not it's invitation, invitation only. only. Yes. And it's at the Maritime Center, and it's uh, at 5.30 on June 1st. Yes, I would love to have it be open to the public, but as you know, the Maritime Center is small. Right. So, and I wanted to make sure that the people that had flagpoles came right. and that everybody else that could tell the story came, so that's why we made it. Right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Now, one quick uh, question on that. Is that, um, actually, never mind. We'll Go ahead. Right no, no. I'll see you there. <laughs> okay. I, actually, I've got a few. Friday, June 1st? It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday, June 1st. Wednesday, June 1st. Wednesday, June 1st. Are all the um, invitations out there, or do, are there still I've selling? I've sent out or? all the invitations. One of the members of the committee said that there are other people that ought to be invited. I should get their names and addresses, and they'll send out more. I think that uh, I think we'll be cozy over there okay. if everybody that's been invited shows up, but many people maybe can't. It's a strange day. It's the middle of the week. I'm sure the weather will be fantastic so well, we can use the deck. Like today, it'll be just the <laughs> six of us. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thank Matt. you very much. Thanks, Matt. Did we end up voting on that, Sheila? Right. So we'll move on to number eight. Let me find it in my book. And this is um, an update on the Harker Peddlers Farmers Markets Licensing. Do you want to update us or do you want me to? Whatever you want to Go do. ahead. Why don't you? Um, at the board's last meeting, uh, we had a rather extended discussion about hawkers and peddlers licenses, not only for hawkers and peddlers traveling throughout town or being in specific locations, but also as they relate to the farmer's market. So although I never do this, in this particular case, I would like to read the memo verbatim. It's about a page. Um, just so we capture everything and then um, open up to the board. As you know, you charged Kim and I at the last meeting to come up with some additional research and findings around that. So we uh, researched over two dozen communities for their policies, bylaws, and practices relative to the issuance of hawkers peddlers license and the oversight and permitting of farmers markets. Uh, this memorandum serves as an interim update as our research continues relative to hawkers peddlers and we will have these uh, anticipated at the June 7th meeting. However, because there are pending issues with farmers market applications, our findings are provided, by provided below. Number one, the issuance of hawkers, peddlers licenses for each market vendor are not applicable nor warranted. All, all market issues are decided by the market manager and or governing board as to what qualifies as eligible market products and who may participate. Our research also indicated that all vendors are required to carry evidence of liability insurance. In general, farmers markets may not sell wholesale or retail products, but provide farm grown or home crafted products or value added products. But again, this is not a town or board of selectmen issue. Number three, the board must vote to approve the use of town land for the market. The board may also limit the number of vendors it believes can safely operate in the approved area. The board can delineate where vendors can set up. The board can limit the time frame from the operation in terms of month and times. The board can direct that all participants must have evidence of liability insurance. <coughs> the original issuance of the Hawkers Peddlers license by the board was the town's good intent to ensure there was some oversight and approval for vendors. However, this was not an appropriate or legitimate use of the Hawkers, vendors ped Hawkers Peddlers license. The market manager is the person that must be responsible for these items. The town has been serving that role and it is not appropriate. However, given that we are already into the season for the market, our recommendations for how the board should proceed in the immediate short term and for the future are as follows. Number one, that the market continue this year and that no further action be taken on licenses already issued. However, no further licenses will be issued as they are not required or appropriate and that the market manager may not approve any additional licenses. And I'll get into that in a bit. The market manager should ensure that retail products being sold or any products not handcrafted hand or farm grown are charging sales tax. Number three, 
that the board determine after review currently be con being conducted by the safety officer the maximum number of vendors allowed in the town owned parking lot. The board issued 12 licenses last year. We already have issued 23 this year and I'm concerned about safety. I've been to the market on a number of occasions last year with the 12 and Officer Tonkin has already been in touch with some of the market folks to do just that. The average um, space used by a vendor is a 10 by 10 tent. One produce vendor needs more, but he's delineating that now so um, you know what the maximum number should be. Number four and the final one is that all responsibility, management, and oversight of the market is directly that of the market manager and our governing board and that the market manager should report to the board next year with a comprehensive set of gui guidelines and rules for operation before use of the parking lot will be approved. Thank now, just to follow up relative to the traveling hawkers, peddlers, um, what we're doing now and why we don't know for sure whether we'll have anything for June 7th is the safety officer is um, doing um, research throughout the town as to places where they're just going to be outright prohibited due to safety or intersections and also appropriate distances from existing businesses or concessions because if you just said you know you can do ice cream but it has to be 500 feet from any business or concession we want to make sure that that 500 feet isn't in the ocean or in the middle of an intersection we just don't want to pick an arbitrary number we want to make sure it's something that's actually, you know, that the vendor is able to comply with. So I'm happy to answer any additional questions. Um, and as I said, Kim and I work very closely on this together. Thank you for doing it so quickly. Um, just one quick question before I go, uh, pass it over. Is the, the information that you gave, is any of this law or is it just what you found, the 12 communities that you talked to, what they're doing? We did about 20, I did about 30 communities. Right. I also founded the Con Farmer's Market in Conway <coughs> eight years ago, which I don't do anymore because I'm here. But um, so basically what we did is we looked at all the guidelines, the operations, the town website in terms of permits, Board of Health permits, police permits, and how they relate to hawkers peddlers. And that's how we backed into this. Right. Mr. Murray. Yeah, I have a series of sort of small questions that don't need a huge answer, but just to, as you were going through and as I was reading earlier. All vendors required to carry evidence of liability insurance under number two, and then under number three, board can direct all participants must have evidence of liability insurance who checks you us or the manager the manager okay um, in some towns one or two that I saw the liability insurance was waived yep uh, for certain vendors not all vendors but again if the board wants to make that a requirement as for use of our parking lot okay that's something in your purview okay can this board set guidelines as to um, the balance of, and I'm just using broad terms here, I'm not intending to be pejorative, about a farmer's market versus a flea market type things. I know there's overlap and it's somewhat subjective, but can we give guidelines as to the sorts of things that we would like to see at this or do we turn over all um, control, if, if you will, as to the content of what is sold there? That would be my recommendation that it's really with the governing board to determine what's sold at the market. This governing board? No, okay. not this governing board. The Their governing right. board. Okay. Or the market manager. The market the manager. Lead. And I didn't have a chance. I don't know. Kim wasn't able to give you a copy of this. Was she, Ann Hill? Right. No. So I apologize that okay. you're just hearing it for the first time. She's on vacation, but it's, it it's came. Yeah. yeah. And we have, Perfect. and I have copies of all the stuff we downloaded from the various yeah. towns. Kingham has the second oldest farmer's market in the state. So um, they've really had lots of years to yeah. perfect it but we have a packet of all that stuff from everything we downloaded to give to you so you can look at different applications some some um, things at the market are juried that there's a board and you're actually deciding the crafts that go there so we'll I can give you all that tomorrow if you stop by and I have just a few more two more quick questions it says the board must vote to approve use of town land for the market have we done that already yeah I think you do that at the beginning ago. of the year she to okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then also the market manager, do we need to formally appoint anybody or we have we nope. de facto done that already or we're all set with that? This is really something that we've been immersed in way more than we needed to, just again through good intent. Sure. And really you're only giving approval of the lot. 
And then all these other things are determined by the folks who really want to do all the, the work to run it. Right, and, and given the good success that we've had and the fact that it's been led yeah. very well and so on, we clearly have a market manager, but I'm just thinking in the future, <coughs> if someone wants to set up something, would we need to approve that person formally? No. Not as an appointment, but just do we have to say, okay, you're okay being the market manager? I would say that is not in your purview. You're just approving the use of town land. Okay. So, so then anybody. So there's another anthill someday and there's competing people that you could decide. Well, that's what I'm kind of which wondering. Which of the two, but, um, right. Could someone come in, and I'm just, I'm speaking out of concern slash protection for all the, I mean, you've started this and invested a lot of heart and soul into it. Could someone else come there at the same time? Because that's the, where we've decided there's going to be a farmer's market at such and such a time. Can someone come in there at the same time and say, well, wait a minute, I'm the market manager, it's not her. Uh, we're just going to set this up and over here is going to be ours and over there is going to be yours. Because what you'll do next year is approve use of the town land for this organization. Okay, so that, that achieves the essentially the anointing of the market manager. Yeah, Perfect, yeah. great, that, that covers you. Great, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Would we be covered if a vendor does not have insurance? Was the town covered? And I don't, I'd hate to see all these vendors have to get liability insurance, but we as a town would be covered, correct? The town has insurance. Right. That's correct. But again, you're permitting a use that's not a general town use there. And one of the things that we did find is that liability insurance was covered. And a lot of <coughs> folks are going to have that already. Right. There'll be one or two instances where it might be a hardship, but again, that's for that group to decide if they want to have a waiver policy and what would constitute that. Okay, so they decide the little boy selling crayons or it doesn't have to have an insurance policy. They can decide that. Okay, right. and then, you know, would the town be covered if someone was hurt or what? There's no other way to say this is regardless of whether the town is liable or not, we will get sued because we have pockets. Makes sense. So regardless, but this is again, you know how you have folks, um, we always like special events, the town is named as an additional insured because they're using town property. <coughs> it's along these same lines. Okay. Any further questions? Um, I had just a couple, obviously we have to generate these guidelines right now there's nothing in place and this is kind of your outline of the direction we should move in just the ones where i say for next year approval of town land and if you want to limit the number of vendors and where they can the area where they can set up okay. now um revenues d does the town lease out the land how, how does that work does the town make any money I, I mean obviously some group will come to us and they'll say we want to use the parking lot here on wednesdays from four to seven <clears throat> and we'll say under these guidelines, 20 vendors can fit in that space, w and and this is the hours of operation and so forth. Is there some sort of arrangement, financial arrangement, or no? No, I no, I don't think no. that. I mean, this is a wonderful thing for the community, so we don't want to charge okay. it. I mean, we have been charging for the Hawker's Peddler's license, right. so the town has been getting a fee for that. Right. But also, the Hawker's Peddler's license is good for a whole year. And the window for the market is like 10 or 12 weeks. I forget, maybe a little longer. But no, the board should not be charging a fee for the Okay, for and there's no farmer's market license no. that, would, that would be generated? No, which is how we got to where we are in the first place because we were trying to, you know, whenever you got the first one three years ago or whatever, this is what we thought was close to sort of say, yes, you have the town's blessing. So at some point over the next several months, we'll finalize these guidelines, discuss them, and vote on them? Yeah, so in advance of the market for next year. But um, Officer Thompson will have the optimum number. If he comes back and says you safely can have 30 there, then, you know, by all means, you can do that. But I'm, I'm thinking just from having been at the market last year that we have 20-some for now. I think you're going to be pretty close. But he's doing that right now. So with Bridget, or I can't remember. Yeah, you okay. Know well, he's working on it. It's only been a week, so. <laughs> okay. Um, any, any thought on the board in terms of, uh, obviously, we can maintain some sort of control over the products that go on there, or do you want to, that would be a discussion point, do we want to turn that over to an entity to do that and discuss what sort of, you know, if all of a sudden products are being sold that we don't want to be sold in the farmer's market, how, what would the recourse be for that? 
would all be points of discussion. Yeah. The, the only thing that, that jumps into my, if I may, Mr. Chairman, is that I, I think we're setting up, and I, I don't know how to get around this, but we're allowing people to sell in competition and not situate with the business and not situate, okay? And use, I can use ice cream, for example, okay? If someone was to come to the farmer's market and put up a slush machine and sell it, whatever. They would be allowed to do that in our situate, even though there's an ice cream store 500 feet away. They would not be allowed to do that in the harbor because of our policy saying you have to stay so far away from a, an ice cream store because you get uh, what's the one down or dribbles or whatever the one down the harbor is. So we have two kind of <coughs> sets of rules here and I, and I just wonder how we can, how we can make that uh, fair. I mean, if, if, if people agree with me that we do have two, yeah. two sets of rules. But I guess what we can do is figure out, you know, this is just what other communities do. We, if we wanted to go off the board and, and kind of create our yeah. own yeah. using well, pieces again, of others. And maybe it wasn't clear. The board is not getting involved in any of the products sold in the market going forward. And those products for it to be a farmer's market have to be farm grown or home grown. So, and in the case of the ice cream, that person has to have a hawker's peddler's license anyway because of the refrigeration and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and then the 500-foot rule or whatever. But the, what the purpose of this is basically ah. said is you're, you're having a divorce right now, oh, and you are not going to see the other party again, <laughs> and you're only going right. to permit the use of the land. Well, I think the, for my concerns, if that's the right word, the fact that it would have to be uh, farm-grown or homegrown, homemade, that may be one of our stipulations. And like, again, and can I just make sure I understood what you said? If it were, or there could be items in there that would be subject to a hawker's peddlers, just to pick up on Joe's example of an ice cream thing, if, if it were homegrown, if it were, but if it were homegrown ice cream, if there is such a thing, but you know what I mean, then that would be subject to a hawker's peddlers license. Right. So and we then, would have that control. Then the group would accept but that. But again, ice cream is not a farmer's market. Uh, right. Yeah, I am. Gotcha. Okay. So, and so. I, I think that's really where, so it was an opportunity for anybody to come and sell stuff, and it really has to go back to what is a farmer's market. It's an opportunity to get fresh produce or help local businesses that don't have retail centers. And then mm -hmm. there's value-added products, which is, I grow tomatoes and I make salsa from that and I want to sell salsa. Mm -hmm. Or I grow herbs and I make pesto and I want to sell pesto. Those are permitted things. But some of the ones that are like you were permitted now would not qualify a year from now. But we're not penalizing people right. this year. We're just saying it's a new day next year. We're just not going to approve anymore. And also because with two dozen already, you're at your optimum number. No. I guess Thank my you. question is, I'm a little confused. Is this what you're suggesting, or is what it has to be? It has to be. I have recommended to you, Kim and I have recommended you how to proceed after 30-some communities right. in Massachusetts. For a farmer's market. For a farmer's market, and what is the guidelines and the policies are after reviewing all those and how they operate. Right. So, and then we will come up with whatever parts of those guidelines we want or don't want is would be our options. That's in the board's discretion. Right. But so but the outcome, one second, right. the outcome would be, as the farmer market is currently constituted, a fairly large amount of those vendors would not be able to participate in the farmer's market, that possibly. Correct. Some of them. On the go forward. Some would. Not a fair number, well, but some. of them. Some. You know, jewelry or, um, you know, some of those things wouldn't fall. But again, fall. if jewelry is being homemade. done at the home. A home homemade, right, right, right. And that's, okay. you know, so what they would do is if they have seven people who want to sell jewelry, I mean jewelry, they would be able to decide if it's different enough or the same enough, or if they're a situate vendor as opposed to a, a Melrose vendor. Right. Those are what all the governing board would determine all those. Okay. Currently we have two vendors that would not be able to sell jewelry. Okay. We have a franchisee. Would not 
not be the criteria as described by you know, but we're not going to we're not going to retro on them now right. for 2011 this would only be up for 2012 <coughs> then, then, one it's one second. Uh, then it's then it's up to them right uh, once miss burbine to have what we may or may not call Wacky Wednesdays so that we, the merchants in North City would, in conjunction with the farmer's market, would in fact be open until 7 o'clock at night to encourage people to utilize the village, to walk around to, to different merchants, etc. We don't view it as competition. We view it as an enhancement to North City. And it, I would, going along with what the town administrator has said, and I couldn't agree with her more, this is really, when you talk about hawkers, peddlers, and not being able to sell ice cream in the harbor, that's that's a truck. That's something different. It's We sell ice cream because I'm involved with Heritage Days. We sell slush and what have you. That's in direct competition, but it's one, it's one weekend out of 52. In North Situate, it's one afternoon 12 times in the summer. It's, it's going to enhance us, it's not going to hurt us. The more, the merrier. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to hear that there's a cooperation between Yeah, them. I don't think, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I don't think there was any intent no, not I to, I mean, you know, I yeah, I not to stop it. We encourage it. I understand, but competition is not necessarily a bad thing. Competition, it just makes all of us work harder, work better, work smarter. And so we're trying to, we're going to have a, a cocktail reception, which most likely you will get an invitation to. Most likely. On Wednesday, Wednesday, on Wednesday the 8th of June, and we invite <coughs> farmers market people if they would like to come, hopefully bring a taste of what they may or may not have to offer. And we're inviting the merchants in North Situate, we're inviting the merchants in the harbor, we're inviting the merchants from Cohasset. We are a community, and we need all to work together to try to benefit <coughs> all of us. It's a plus. You don't sell ice cream, so we've got to figure out how the ice cream people feel. So back to Mr. Murray for a second. Uh, just so I make sure I understand what's going on here. So for the long term, that is for 2012, there may or may not be additional discussions on some of the things you're talking about. But for the short term, do you need us to formally agree to the memo of May 13th? No, because you have, Because you have on page two, these four recommendations, your recommendations to how the board should proceed in the immediate short term and for the future as follows, and you got four things there. What do you, what do you need from us? So this one thing, you're not gonna approve any more hawkers and peddlers. Until we get the safety and report. You want to communicate to the market manager that you don't think they should be approving any more vendors because you might be at your maximum now in terms of whatever Officer Thompson comes up. And then like next year, <coughs> you'll adopt these guidelines for going forward. Everybody's held harmless this year because sure. the market is about to start. So you just need a sense of the board as to this memo? I think it is what it is. It's, yeah. I mean, well, these are just recommendations. Exist we could, the in theory, we could say, thank you very much for your hard work. We don't want to do any of these. Right. Good. So, I mean, I think it's, I do just think it's important that there be some. Right. But if we accept record. these now, I think Correct. for the rest but of this year, we're just going to proceed as we are. If you, if somebody else wanted to come in because somebody else dropped off, then they'd come before us as they always have. And for next year, we will. But no. you're not going to no. grant any more hawkers and peddlers because you, that is, you don't want to make two wrongs exactly in the right. Point. You've granted 25, you have the 25 or 23, but you're not granting any hawkers or peddlers again under <coughs> for a farmer's market because it's not the appropriate use of that statutory license. That's exactly my point about these points. Okay. Mr. Harris. So to, to their point, if two or three <laughs> vendors drop out and someone makes homemade donuts, They'd see Jess and Angel, and if they, yeah. yeah. If we say you got 25 slots, or Mark says you can have 30, they're dealing with it now. You've given them approval to use of the land. You've told them they can use the land and operate their market as they do. Um, but again, a year from now, before you approve use of the land, as I say in the memo, you want to see some op overriding guiding principles for their operation. I agree with that. The one thing you're going to want to do is <coughs> ensure that people have some form of insurance for liability.
because the liability is not on the town. It's going to be on the farmer's market. It's going to be on each and every vendor throughout how you manage it. So that's going to be an important component. Would it make sense? Would it make sense to have your group at least formalize a group and come up with a group name and come up with a manager and give us that information? You know, within our next meetings, June, June 7th, and we'll try and start moving in that direction so that if there's a problem, we know who to go contact. Question to that point, Mr. Chairman. How much should, how much should we be communicating back to you from this point forward? We've laid the ground rules. Mm -hmm. What do you want to know? I think at this point, um, yeah. we want you to formalize a group and give us some names of some people. We want you to get insurance from the people that are currently there, and we don't want you to add anyone else. Is yep. that? That's a good start. Sir. Sound a good start? Yep. And maybe you could suggest, if, it, if, if I may, Mr. Chair, yeah. to say, um, uh, you know, sometime in July, mid-July, late July, just to have an informal meeting, how things going, just to check in. That's all. So, and also, if we get a, if we get the our safety officer to give us the report <coughs> and see that there's Excuse me. 50 slots instead of the current 20, then maybe we'd discuss it up here, although that probably is unlikely. And if you can, like I said, if you can get the town administrator that just that piece of paper so that there is some sort of formalized, um, you know, communication point between the two, that would be probably a good step. Any other? No, I mean, just I think I agree with Ann, and even though, you know, the memo sort of, sort of lays out some strict things, I mean, the, this is a happy problem. When you were here two years ago, you just had sort of a nub of an idea, and right. now you have too many vendors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it really is a good thing. We just want to make sure it's a little more, you know, right. following what the rest of the world's doing relative to their market. Also, with your comments, I would Okay, so we don't need a motion. Any any other discussion? Can I just ask one question? Yep. Uh, and if you can just, I know I've been remiss. If you can just say your name and where you live. Jessica Williams. Thank you, Jessica. Um, about the insurance, have you heard anything from the Sandy? I'm still going around and 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 around and
go there on an afternoon and you can watch a game. Um, lastly, I just wanted to give a quick um, thank you to, to Betsy Callanan, who, who runs the Special Olympics um, group in town. And they had uh, their Olympics in Brockton last weekend, and a bunch of adult athletes, as well as some um, younger child athletes, went. And it was just a fabulous time. And, and all the volunteers that go and help, and all the athletes that participated in Betsy really put a lot of time and energy into this. And it's a great cause for, for um, you know, just great smiles that you see out there. So thank you for your help. And uh, that's all I have. So move on to number 11. Uh, correspondence. I think we have one, Mr. Murray. Mr. Chair, we have one letter. Um, again, it's from Jennifer Vitelli, uh, Director of the Recreation Department. It's addressed to Mr. Fran McMillan, who most of you are probably aware of from the mooring services and down uh, the harbor. Dear Mr. McMillan, I want to thank you for taking the time and your resources to shrink wrap the Recreation Department's J24, the seventh player, sailboat. You have been a wonderful, supportive friend to the Rec Department and an integral part of the success of the sailing program through the years. With sincere appreciation, Jennifer Patel. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Do we have to? No. We, no. we accepted that already. Great. So now moving on to number 12. Um, Ex move the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the minutes for May 10th, 2011. Second. Second. Moved by Mr. Murray, second by Mr. Norton. All in favor? Aye. 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 And on to number 13, which is move the Board of Selectmen vote to adjourn the meeting at 7.51 p.m. That's second. Good. Second. Good. 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 Second. Good. Hold on for one second. Uh, Go down the back. Yes, sir. Uh, those here on the, the ship be left these big duty ones, whatever you want to pass them out. Oh, great. Okay. From you just Brown. leave Thank them on you. the table there. Um, that's the story of the ship, so if you're interested in reading it in. Great. So. For adjournment, I have uh, Mr. Murray made the motion. Second. Mr. Gordon made the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night, folks.